Hello, uh, can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so um, I'm, uh, I'm Ling Guanting, and uh, the other speaker is Wang Xiaowu. And uh, our topic today is um, working with native indigenous communities to build native language LibreOffice projects. Um, okay, this will be a light topic, I think, but it's, it's an important issue. So um, indigenous people in Taiwan have been in a social economically disadvantaged position due to the historical mistakes made by the government and the dominant class, and whereby the native languages were replaced by Mandarin. And um, in contemporary society, the social economically disadvantaged position also excluded the indigenous peoples from the te from technology. Um, and recently, the government in Taiwan has decided to adopt the ODF format in place of other preparatory formats uh, as the national standard. In the meantime, the official documents in indigenous languages policy requires official documents to be written in indigenous languages in uh, native areas. So taking this together, there is a rising need in writing LibreOffice documents in indigenous languages. Therefore, um, native language, language version of LibreOffice helps both the indigenous people and the government. Uh, we believe that if we could provide a more friendly software environment, we can be part of the official documents in indigenous languages policy. And we can increase the usage of indigenous languages with this. So this is um, something we presented last year at the LibreCon. However, this kind of project would often involve complicated issues of identity politics. As we implemented the project this year, uh, there were several public controversy uh, uh, related to ethnicities in Taiwan, such as um, ethnic discrimination on public videos and inappropriate headlines on news media. And this speeches uh, be deliberate or not would cause harm to ethnic minorities and lead to strains between ethnic groups. Therefore, we need to pay more attention to these issues if we are to do things about the indigenous community. And we have heard a few non-indigenous community members asking us like, um, I want to do something to help, but I don't have indigenous friends. So I don't know uh, if I will do something inappropriate. Or they ask um, who I can work with can truly represent the indigenous people. So to cope with these concerns, we consulted people from the indigenous movement and organized the things we've learned uh, throughout the year. And we've come up with three useful steps to share with you and everyone who want to join or to build an open source project for the indigenous community. We believe the first crucial step for an outsider to participate in a project for the indigenous community is that we should not be presumptuous about what is good for the community. A classic bad example in this regard is a classroom full of unneeded e-whiteboards and 
computer hardware upgrades every year. We have seen them in some indigenous tribes as well as in urban schools. And some technology experts and some government officials, they think this UI ports as superior technologies, but they often disregard, disregard the real needs of teachers and students. Such situations are even more likely to happen in an indigenous context. Uh, people often have uh, orientalist biases and make entirely wrong assumptions about the indigenous community. But we should really ask, um, what does it mean to be indigenous? What things do indigenous people need? So the answer can vary from a tribe to another tribe. But before diving into a new idea for tech related projects, you can read some ethnography works, find opinion articles written by local indigenous activists, or just ask them to figure out the an answers to to the questions if you happen to have indigenous friends. What we want to emphasize here is that the key to understanding a different culture is to know the local view. Um, so you will really know what they need and what you can build for them. Okay, so step two. The second step is to find the right people to connect with. Um, recently, when the government in Taiwan tried to find representatives for each indigenous pe people, they selected a representative for the Kavalan people who was actually not engaged in indigenous or local affairs. And the incident backfired on the government severely suggesting that um, we should be wary of the issue of representativeness when we try to connect with the indigenous community. We ourselves also made a similar mistake. One of us once went to a tribe to, to start a collaboration with, uh, with them, but uh, he only got approval from the local priest and the head of uh, the village who was an elected government official. He did not seek permission from the leader of the indigenous tribe and the leader was quite angry. So each group or organization in the indigenous community is a little universe like families, kings, clubs, schools, churches, meetings, tribes, and uh, some that don't even have words for them. And they are always, always overlapped and intertwined, and they all have different opinions and interests. Moreover, uh, there are at least three types of indigenous political structures in Taiwan, according to anthropologists. Um, and each political structure have has its own power dynamics and decision-making rules. Therefore, it is really dangerous just to assume that the indigenous community forms a homogenous whole. We, we should understand and respect the complex and different decision-making processes in each group. And you will find the right people to begin your work only after you make efforts to understand the complex realities of the community. Or privileged um, capability exposure Last to that one on particular this, process. Um, only. And um, you know that's that's a basic idea. So we reduce our mutual, um, mutual security. Um, you know, so why them. and how does your uh, community? It turned out that it's not that straightforward. Um, indigenous community. To simply just say mount. According and give it a to an indigenous and be done with. 
uh, the fact is that this urban um, people the API is, is find actually much more complicated. Go in there it has as a if lot they were of to open up a website. And as you would imagine, so seeing strangers in a tribe would make the residents have an aversion or feel even feel insecure. So avoid this kind of mindsets and try to follow these tips. Um, first, get the people familiar with the concept of free and open source software. Emphasis on the nonprofit aspect of free software so they will know that you are not trying to make money out of this. The best way of doing this is to start your first events in a tribe with free classes of LibreOffice and other free software apps. Usually, education is a neutral concept, and it is a trustworthy medium to generate generate trust. So highlight your project as an educational resource as well. Also, do not stay close with unpopular people and politicians, even when they seem to be very helpful. Avoid them forever. If you make your first appearance with people who are not trusted in the tribe, your first impression will surely be affected. So pay attention to the power dynamic in a tribe and um, and choose the right person, as we talked about earlier. They can be teachers or local NGO workers, usually, but they are not politicians, usually. And finally, mutual trust leads to support when you are trying to advocate policy. The trust that you work hard to build can help you when you are trying to change something in the tribe and even legislation related to your project. For example, if you want to convince a local elementary school to try liberal office in class, or if you just want to want more people to share the concept of free software for you in a tribe, mutual trust can be really helpful. So let's recap. Um, we have three steps. The first is to abandon your presumption. Just don't assume anything before you redo your homework. And the second step, find the right people to connect with, and like NGO workers or teachers. And third, maintain relationships based on mutual trust. And that will really help you when you are trying to like um, make more people use LibreOffice instead of pirate Microsoft Office. And this wraps our presentation. And if you want to find out more about uh, our plan, um, I think if you Google native language uh, LibreOffice Taiwan, you will find uh, an article we've written on uh, TDF's, TDF's website. And thank you so much for listening.